I found a jointer on Craigslist. About 90 year old jointer. Didn't know it was that old when I was looking. Um, I went to the guy that had it in a snowstorm. He helped me load it onto my trailer. We got it home completely covered in salt. I opened up the packaging that I put it in and was pleasantly surprised with what I found. It's definitely old. It's definitely something that needs a lot of work. But this is the story about how I started working on it. The first goal was to get this thing off the trailer. Uh, I, we used a forklift to put it on the trailer, and it was pretty easy to do that. But, uh, you know, I'm alone in my barn. So I strung up my chain hoist, put some belts around the thing, pulled the trailer out from underneath it, and uh, put it on its pedestal. This is not a lightweight machine. I'm guessing it's probably eight or 900 pounds and pushing it around was not easy. I used this really sketchy method with a bottle jack and some firewood and lumber and it, it was sketchy, but I got the thing off the wheels and got it set down on the concrete. I spent about four hours just trying to get the rust off the surface. In the end, it turned out pretty good. So here it is, a 12-inch joiner made by Superior Machine Works in Chicago, Illinois, distributed by Gustafson and Scott, also in Chicago. Well, here we go. First try, we did the wiring. We have a five-horse motor that came off an old air compressor wired three phase hopefully there's eight wires coming out of the motor and they got to go connect to four yeah we'll see I think I got the wiring right so here's our first test three two one <laughs> Check it out. We have a motor and it's going the right direction. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. <laughs> I have to finish doing a little switch wiring when the switch comes in. But I think I got it. This is a drip feed oil lubricator. This is actually just the sighting hole to see the drip as it drips down. There's supposed to be a bowl on top of here with a needle valve that goes down inside in order to control how the drip works. So I am going to have to replace our manufacturer. The, the drip well. Both tables on this 12 inch joiner are fully adjustable. Each of the four corners, in and out, up and down. Anything you want to adjust, it's adjustable. I was pretty eager to get into the bearing mounts to see how they are. I figured that was the biggest risk I had on this entire purchase. Okay. Wow, isn't that interesting? It has fresh oil on it still. A little bit of debris, but oh my god, it's gorgeous. So you can see that's the hole where the oil comes in and there's a reservoir that goes either direction. And that feeds into each of these bearing points. Wow! 
That is beautiful. This, is this lead? Is this melted lead? It's soft. Wow. That is so cool. See how this one looks. Gently. Kind of sticking on one side. Ah, no registrations on this one, just one bearing all the way across. One bearing surface. So it's located from the other end, and this end is purely. Oh, is that grease? No. Nope. Yeah, it's just grease. Not. I'm going to clean this up as best I can. There's actually little flakes of lead in there where it's been run dry. Wow, this is so cool. And there's no, there's nothing on this end for spacers. are called Babbitt bearings and it, the alloy is about 80% lead and it was poured in place around the shaft. I'm gonna have to do some more learning to figure out how these things were made with lead. The spindle is in such good shape that uh, In. I am not going to even consider doing anything to it. That is gorgeous. There's no oil in there right now. I think I'll throw some oil in there just to be sure it has some. Look at that. That is so cool. The way that works. Well, this appears to be why there are uh, spacers under here, because this, if I tighten it down, it would just simply clamp too tight onto the shaft. for now but at least it'll make sure that it stays oiled at least enough to not get me in trouble pretty cool so cool. That is so freaking cool. It's amazing how this thing is built. And 100 years old, 
I'd love to know if somebody had to rebuild these bearings. Or did they last a hundred years with proper maintenance? Ball bearings wouldn't last a hundred years. Oh, oh, it's beautiful. All right. So as far as I can tell, everything is square, flat, moves, adjusts, levels. I can't find anything wrong with this thing yet. I'm gonna have to get new blades. I'm pretty sure I need new blades. I could probably even get these sharpened and they'll work, but there's a nick out of the end of one of them. Um, I got a motor on it. We got the motor wired. I think this thing will fly. I think this thing will actually run. I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm excited. <laughs> this is my excited face. So where do you get replacement parts like antique oilers, belts, pulleys, things like that? Well, Amazon Prime, of course. Two-day shipping. It all came in. I used a wheel puller and pulled the old wheel off the air compressor motor and I put the new smaller wheel back on to get the RPMs up to where they should be on the joiner. <laughs> That's good. on temporarily just to uh, see if I can figure out how they work and oh nice drip it's like a slow IV drip all right turn that one off Wheel this one up. It's got a cap there. That's enough. Close the cap. And then I have to adjust it. What I'm looking for is a drip maybe once every 30 seconds down here. Starting to build up. There's a drip. Drip, so that's way too fast. Close it down. A little bit more than that. There we go. That turns it off. So when I use the tool, I have to go on, turn them both on, and then I can turn the electric on. RPMs are definitely not where they should be. They're too low. Um, I think it's because it's two blades and not three. 
The second thing that happened is it just popped the breaker. I gotta deal with that. I'm not sure what's causing that. Five horse motor might be drawing too much. So what I have is I have this inverter, this roto phase inverter. So this is the 12 horse three phase converter. A 12 horse three phase converter should be enough to run a five horse motor unless there's something wrong with the motor. Why is it drawing too much? According to the plate on the motor it should only be drawing about 14 amps. Now if I turn on the joiner motor So now after all this work putting this motor in place, getting the parts to get it running, running the free three phase electrical to it, I have to decide whether I want to even keep it. The thing draws 60 amps. 60 amps. I don't think there's anything else in the house that draws 60 amps. I don't think a hot tub draws 60 amps. So here's where the project stands now, and here's where I'm going to leave it for this video. Um, I have a joiner. It's level. It's flat. Everything works. Um, new blades are coming. Should be good. Uh, the motor draws 60 amps, and I have a 30 amp circuit for this three-phase three-phase converter. Uh, right now it's only on a 30 amp 220 circuit, so I'd have to run 6 gauge wire to get it to a 60 amp circuit. Um, it's blown the breaker once, which means it's definitely heating up. Um, has to be fixed. Uh, the RPMs with the small pulley, with this one, are too low. And the RPMs with that one are too high. So I have to pick something that has, I gotta get a new pulley that has about half uh, the RPMs of the high one, well, somewhere in between the two, and try that. So RPMs are wrong, and the motor's wrong. Kind of both related. So I have to fix those, and then I should be good to go. Cross your fingers. Not absolutely sure for that about that, but you know, we'll see. So that's where I'll leave it. Thanks for watching.